Hey, welcome back, folks. Brian Gregg here uh, with another screencast on Phaser. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about two fundamental concepts of uh, game programming. One is going to be the JavaScript implementation for a factory function, and the other is going to be handling groups of enemies uh, as opposed to just a single object representing an enemy. Uh, these are uh, going to be uh, critical to us being able to build a fully functional game. So um, strongly encourage you to uh, watch this and fully understand these concepts uh, in order to um, understand uh, how we're going to be uh, proceeding with these games going forward. Uh, so first things first, uh, just some uh, overview of the basic uh, structural changes that we made to our program. Uh, the first thing that we did was uh, within our play state object, uh, we have uh, changed instead of what we had before was a uh, player and an enemy object. Now we have a player and a mob object. This mob object represents a group of enemies as opposed to just a single enemy. And uh, this is how we're going to create a, um, a group of enemies for our player. Uh, the second thing that I would like to note is uh, down here, uh, we have moved a lot of our uh, functionality for our player and our enemy into uh, individual functions. These are um, functions which we're going to be using to create new objects or new sprites on the page. That's what I mean when I'm referring to a factory function. This is going to be a function that we call and we assign to a object on the page through its return value. Uh, that is going to allow us to create multiple sprites with their own individual attributes and their own individual methods on the page. Uh, you will notice that the player function uh, creates the game sprite on the page. And uh, this is all code that was originally in our initiali initialize function in our um, uh, in, in, in our create function, it has now been moved into its own separate function for uh, when we create an object using our factory function. And uh, we set some of the same properties here on this player, the frame, the X destination, the Y destination, set the anchor, set the animations, and then we have some methods. The methods are for setting the destination, updating, and stopping the player. And then lastly, like I had said, it's going to return the player object. So uh, we can then access those properties and access those methods from within our program uh, as we need. The set destination function is going to be for when we're handling the uh, mouse input. Uh, we're going to want to set its X and Y destination so that we know where the player is moving to. The update function is going to be called every time the screen refreshes to check the x and y coordinates to see if they have um, reached their respective destinations and if so uh, resetting the velocity to zero otherwise keeping the velocity set to its uh, its rate and uh, making sure that the scale is set appropriately and the stop function which does exactly what you would think it would do it's going to set the x and y destinations to the current x and y um, coordinates and set the velocity back to zero. Similarly, our enemy factory function uh, creates a sprite on the screen for the enemy. It assigns it to an enemy object, sets the x and y destination properties, uh, creates the animations for our enemy, the frame, the anchor, and the x coordinates and then we have some just some functions here which have not been fleshed out yet which will eventually be used for when we want to move the enemies around on the screen and lastly returning the enemy so that on the application when we run the create function what we will be doing is uh, setting the player object which is an object that's part of the play state to a new player and then calling this constructor is going to pass the 300 and 200 values which are going to be the x and y coordinates 
again, the X and Y coordinates here, which will be used when we create the sprite, as well as when we set the initial X and Y destination values. We um, kept a lot of the same functionality here for adding the player to the game, enabling physics for the player, and then here, this is um, another uh, new concept that uh, we've implemented here for creating multiple enemies on the page. Uh, what we've done is we've uh, created a group. So creating self.mob equals game.add.group is going to add a group of uh, enemies, a group of uh, sprites to the page, which will be treated as an array. And then we can add individually enemies with their own properties. Uh, like I said, when you're using a factory function, you can create um, multiple objects all with their own individual properties. So each of these will have their own individual X and Y coordinates. And then we will loop through the um, array using a for each function. The for each function will um, uh, run through each enemy in the array and it will enable physics for that enemy and set its body to immovable. So let's take a look what that looks like. And here we go. We have our character on the page and we've got a slew of enemies on the page as well. Exactly what we were expecting. In the update phase, uh, what we're doing here is uh, we are again setting uh, animating the player, and then looping through each of the enemies in the mob array and animating them, uh, checking to see if the active pointer is down. If the active pointer is down, then we're calling that set destination function with the uh, X and Y coordinates for the uh, input, calling the update function on the player object, and then this is the really cool part. This is where I think um, a framework like Phaser helps tremendously. Uh, what we're doing is we're calling the collide function on the player, and then not just on the enemy, but on the entire array of enemies. So if the player collides with any of the enemies within this mob array, it is going to call the stop function on our player, which as you can see here, if we click on the screen, he is going to be stopped by every one of these enemies. So that is what I wanted to cover today. Uh, some great functionality here uh, for getting started with making a more complex game. Uh, we'll be taking a look at some other topics in some future screencasts, which will um, help to uh, reduce some of the complexity of this, maybe using some uh, prototypal inheritance and uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, uh, Twitter, ignore intuition, uh, check, comment, and reply back to the channel if this is uh, something you want to see more of, and um, I look forward to hearing from you all soon. Thank you.